I also antagonized a lot of people by recognizing the state of Israel as soon as it was formed. Well, I had been to Potsdam, and I'd seen uh, some of the places where the Jews had been slaughtered by the Nazis. Six million Jews were killed outright, men, women, and children, by the Nazis. And uh, it was my hope that they would have a homeland where they could operate. So when the time came for that, we set up the Israeli government in uh, Palestine, moved some of the Arabs out, and they were not moved out and thrown, or thrown out. They were compensated for the land that they had to give up. The Jews organized a, a government over there, and it's been a successful one ever since. They've done things over there that never have been done in that part of the world before. And that while it's a small republic, it's an energetic one. They, not long ago, they had a fuss with Egypt. And if they hadn't been interfered with by the then president of the United States, Nasser would have been on, down in the Sudan where he belongs. <laughs> that won't help <coughs> diplomatic relations. Dean 48. I found in the United States a lot of bigotry and uh, opposition to Jews as such, which I could never understand for the simple reason that the Jewish people gave us our moral code entirely. And I had a, a partner when I first got out of the uh, White House and moved back to Kansas City, a uh, fellow by the name of Eddie Jacobson. And he and I started a haberdashery store and we went broke and lost a lot of money. I, I furnished the money and Eddie furnished the know-how. And when we went broke, why, they forced Eddie into bankruptcy. They couldn't put me into bankruptcy because I was on the county court. That was uh, long before I was president of the United States. I said it was afterwards, but it was before. And, of course, when the thing was all over and Eddie became prosperous after that, he met his share of those losses. And that's my idea of a good Jew. But don't think that decision to recognize Israel was an easy one. I had to make a compromise with the Arabs and divide Palestine. The Jews wanted to chase all the Arabs into the uh, Tigris and Euphrates River, and the Arabs wanted to chase all the Jews into the Red Sea. And I was trying, what I was trying to do was to find a homeland for the Jews and still be just with the Arabs. But when you go into a thing of that kind, the people you help most are the ones that get most angry with you. Both of them were against me on the situation, but as President of the United States, I paid no attention to them, carried out what I thought was right, and I had the support of the Congress, and I could do it, which is unusual in these days. Could you tell us specifically that a lot of Jewish people were against you, too? Well, oh, well, there were a lot of Jewish people against me because they wanted the whole of Palestine. As I say, they wanted to drive all the Arabs into the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Yeah. 1539. There they were on both sides. There I was in the middle, between both sides. I was in the position of the referee in a prize ring when the two big wrestlers turn on the referee instead of going ahead with the wrestling. I was in real trouble. Okay. 7.46, take one. The kettle was boiling. And the whole business was very discouraging. I wrote a letter to an assistant. I surely wish to God, uh, uh, wish God Almighty would give the children of Israel an Isaiah, the Christians of St. Paul and the sons of Ishmael a peep at the golden rule. Uh, could you give us the first uh, sentence uh, without looking down? Yes, the kettle was boiling and the whole business was very discouraging. I wrote one assistant. Then, then read You want me to go ahead now?
Roy Anderson was one of them. We had several other uh, people in the country, even among the Jews, the Zionists particularly, who were against anything that was to be done if they couldn't have the whole of Palestine and everything handed to them on a silver plate so they wouldn't have to do anything. It couldn't be done. We had to take it in small doses. You can't move uh, five or six million people out of a country and fill it up with five or six million more and expect both sets of them to be pleased. We had all sorts of objections to everything that was done. Something had to be done. We went ahead and done it and had it done, and, and now it, it's working out eventually. I think we'll have them all satisfied, but it's going to take a great deal of time yet to get the job done. Now, could you tell us that they were worried about uh, war with the Arabs? Seven fifty-eight, take one. Now, cue for the next map. Put the rivers on immediately. All right. I had some surveys made in this part of the world when I was president of the United States. This Dead Sea Valley is far below the Mediterranean Sea Valley, several hundred feet. My idea was to uh, get a siphon from the Mediterranean Sea to the Dead Sea Valley because after you got the water started through that siphon, I would say 100 yards wide, the water itself would do its own pumping. You wouldn't have to pump it. It would run just exactly like a siphon because this end of it would be far below the Mediterranean Sea. And of course, that's an inexhaustible source of water, but it's only fit for power. It's salt water. Then I had a survey made of the Tigris and the Euphrates Valleys with the idea of finding out whether they were still a potential place for the settlement of people. When that survey was made, it was discovered that some of the old canals were still there that were there in the time of Nineveh and Babylon, and that, that if those rivers were again uh, put to work as they were in the time of the great population of Babylon and Nineveh, They'd support at least 30, uh, 3 million or 4 million people, just as they did in the time of Nineveh and Babylon. And that in that way, you'd put all this country here to be into production instead of letting it go to pot. You could not very well uh, economically get the Tigris and Euphrates Valley into Israel because there's a great hump here over which it wouldn't go. But you can take the Mediterranean Sea over that hump and let it fall into the Dead Sea and it'll do its own pumping. That's, that was what I had in mind. And that survey was made by the Tennessee Valley Authority, and the report of it's in my file yet. 